I'm at a gypsy. Yeah. Then what happens is you get people from overseas, vested interests, driving the policy of your country through through because bureaucrats. Because there's such a small people like that have the ability now to be bought. If you've got decentralized power, correct. If you've got decentralized power, then it's so much harder to buy those people. Correct. So I that's a natural provision for safeguarding the country. Direct democracy is a direction that I think like if you could just click your fingers, complete revolution like that. That's how we vote. Everybody, you get a set. I mean, I've we don't have time for it now, but I mean, then if you've got. 25 million people voting on policy in Australia. How the fuck does Big Pharma buy 25 million people? Very Do you easy. know how they buy? By doing a really good job. No, but that's one way to do it. The other way they do it is they mass communicate. And we already know yeah. that they've been fined billions in lies. So I've given this some thought. Citizens initiated referendum, I believe, are essential. Yeah. I, I have a. Uh, when I was a kid, I remember an. Uh, an an older person, she was in her 60s, she went to, and she was never politically astute, never never interested, right? She went to Switzerland for a holiday. Switzerland are a country that has four uh, referendums every single year. Well, it has a better system even than that. So she came back just having a holiday, right, with her husband. And I said, Auntie Betty, what do you think of Switzerland? Expecting her to think of majestic snowy mountain peaks and great people and friendly and clean and all the rest of it. She said they have responsibility. Mm. the governments are responsible I said what she said yeah there's a very strong sense of responsibility you know what does it if the governments make a stupid mistake then just by I've forgotten the percentage but you can raise I, I tried could, to look up the percentage could, but I couldn't find it might it. be around 1% or whatever it is it's, it's fairly small then if you can get 1% of people on a petition then the government has to put that law to the people as a, as a referendum. And those those take place four times a year. And the other thing is that the people can say, right, you're doing a shitty job as Re-vote. Prime Minister, out you go. Yeah. Now, th- there is a problem with having direct democracy voting through these things because Big Pharma can spend more. We know that they lie through the media. We know that they manipulate so the truth. So my... So you, you, they would control the people through massively communicating. So that's, I, I that's think, flawed. I think that there's a way to mitigate that. I think that um, let's say you've got this direct democracy, right? It You go to a system where it's like America, where you don't have to vote. It's not, uh, it's not mandatory to vote. And then you get uh, the options would be filtered by like national legislation, state legislation, essentially by postcode, right? So you could have, you go in and you go oh, like, I see what you're doing. and you go, okay, I want to vote on this particular issue. Like, so for instance, like a, a, a thing that's close to home for me would be the culling of crocodiles in North Queensland, right? Why the fuck would some yuppie dickhead in Melbourne that lives in fucking St. Kilda have any idea of the crocodile problem? In North Queensland. You've got it. Do you know who knows about the crocodile problem in North Queensland? I know about the crocodile problem in in North Queensland. I can tell you 50 swimming holes that I spent my entire childhood in that you cannot go to now. And you know what? Your argument, what you just said about Big Pharma, this plays perfectly into this. Bindi fucking Irwin. God bless her soul. <laughs> as soon as they started talking about culling crocodiles in North Queensland, Bindi Irwin sends a tweet. Oh, they're going to do this to the poor crocodiles. And then, boom. Every It was intense, man. They're people that should have absolutely no jurisdiction. Like, they really shouldn't have a say. They, they kind of should have the ability to have a say in a sense. But this is my second part of that plan. You get this material on your phone. You go, this is the bill that I want to vote on, right? You have to read both sets of material that are you could call it independently peer-reviewed, non-profit organisate, blah, 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 blah. There's, there's holes in it. There would be a way to do it, right? You have to read the, the both sides of the argument. Then you have to answer simple multiple choice questions that have, have showed that you've read both sides of the material. The biggest problem that we have now, and this is because of algorithms on YouTube and Facebook and Instagram is that you get ramrodded one fucking side of every single argument. You're a pro-Trump supporter. You will never, ever see 
anything that makes sense from the left in your Instagram feed. You'll never, you get delivered content. How do I know? Because it's literally my job to try and figure out how to make that shit work to make me money. So you get people that are, have to be forced to read a multitude of articles that have been, uh, you'd, you'd have to have, there, there would be, there are objective people out there, you know, uh, and then you, you vote. Uh, you sorry, you do your multiple choice that shows that you've read both sides of the material and then bang, you get to cast your vote. That's a lot of work, man. That's a lot of work. You would be, you would get informed voters, right? And so a good example of this gay marriage, we had the referendum around uh, gay marriage. I'm completely for gay, gay marriage. That to me feels just like a human right. And there's some uh, insurance implications and there's some legal implications that come with that. That's my, that's my opinion. If you don't like that opinion, that's completely fine with you. It went to the polls. It turns out that my opinion was the opinion that the majority of the country shared, right? If you've got that, that vote doesn't go your way then and you've got this ability to do referendums and to do these recall elections you are going to want to become a more informed voter i think that this kind of system would encourage people to vote uh on um or, or be active members of parliament and it would make people feel like they actually had uh, a say you raise a very very strong argument because uh and on the one hand if you had um, make it made it voluntary to vote, many people would just say bugger it. Until, right. until a bunch of queers get married, and then they're like, "Well, fuck, I didn't want that." Right. So, so, um, what you're saying is you're putting responsibility on the people. And throughout my um, career in business, whenever that's happened, initially people go, "No, don't want that responsibility. You keep it." But after a while, they love it mm. because they're free. Because when they have responsibility, providing you give them authority, you must give them authority. Then if they have that authority and responsibility, all of a sudden they're free. Mm-hmm. And they, with that, you have a much more involved um, workforce. You have a much more involved citizenry. So I agree with you. And then it comes down to education. And then you're leaving it into the free market of ideas. And then I'd be talking, I'd be like, Ronan, dude, you got to, you, you, you have to vote on this. Just one this. You problem, and I think I've got the answer for you. Just one problem, and that is that throughout history, a small group of people has always been able to tug into our care for, for things, whether it's the environment or people or whatever, our care for things, and manipulate that. Mm. So there are many instances. But you're a big data guy. Yeah, that's right. But most people aren't. So um, when you go walk into a Mercedes showroom, you know, they'll try to feed you all the facts and all the rest of it. And, and if you just say, hang on, this is a bloody expensive car here. Mm. You know, I can get a Honda that's better quality, more reliable down the road for a third the price. Then they always do this. Wouldn't you like to be in the world's safest car? Wouldn't your family deserve that? <laughs> See what I mean? The emotion comes in, completely yeah. bypasses. And then they'll do it in front of your wife. Mm. So then you think your wife thinks, oh, "Geez, I'm not going to be." You know, but again, but I feel so. Like what? So the answer then? Then I think, Jace, more education. Is, no, well, that always helps. But the answer is to minimize central government. Mm. What the Americans have also done very well is that they've got governments at their local level which control money, control taxes, so they're responsible for their county taxes, so that so they're voted on that accordingly. They look after basic services. The state governments look after other services. The federal government's supposed to look after only defense and a few other things, right? Mm. Now, over the years, the, the federal government has taken a lot of the state's power in America, done the same here. The only solution that I can come up with is minimize central government. That is the key problem. Yeah. Maximize the services in the state and maximize them locally. So then, by all means, do what you had, but not while we've got a massive central government because oh, yeah, it's, no, it's I'm, always hijacked. I'm, compl- I'm completely against having a massive central government. Yeah. I think this is a way to uh, to go against that. Um, so uh, it's got it's got merit. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy gang.